In Galatians 6, 7, it says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. In life, if you want a house, you work for it. If you want a nice car, you work for it. In a fair society, one should be able to work for these things and get them. For example, I should be given my rightful place in society. I should make over six figures. And I should get all these things that I have worked for. If one wants a beautiful woman who is spiritual and righteous. One should work on their mind, body, and soul and be realistic with themselves. I have studied philosophy, morality, psychiatry, secret societies, martial arts, on and on, for over 20 years. I know very well what I deserve. They have cheated me out of my rightful place and everything I deserve. Because they are worldly garbage. And they have worked for their places in hell. Burning for eternity like the lowly sniveling traitors to God that they are. You reap what you sow. So if life is to be fair, if a society is fair to all you social planner cowards, if you were doing a good job, hard workers such as my parents would be very rich. Speaking of this, incidentally, the term filthy rich implies that these people have a filthy soul. And I'm talking about the elite. But back to the subject at hand. If you had done a good job, and I say that all of you should step down because you failed. If you had any dignity and honor, you would stop with your inferior social planning. Because had you done had, had you have done a good job, if you did a good job, I wouldn't be being gang stalked. I would be given my rightful place, and every man like me would have a decent and respectable place in society. You did not do a good job, and as a result, a bunch of soulless, sniveling cowards drive around in their fancy cars with attractive women who have been targeted intensely for materialistic and gold-digging succubi philosophies. It is a disgrace and an outrage. You have failed miserably. When the best and the brightest are shunned, and people who are kind of clever are celebrated as being the smartest in society or some bitch shit like that, you have failed. When the most attractive women are being told by unattractive women, attractive women in all of society practically, that they need to do good for themselves and date some kind of soulless, traitor to humanity, eugenicist, scoundrel, piece of shit. You have failed. When it is the righteous and the meek and those who spread the truth who are being shunned and not the rich, soulless garbage, you have failed. When you constantly put out there that, oh, it's the 99% against the 1%, and the 99%, for the most part, and for all intents and purposes, pretty much, worship the 1%, you have failed. All of the controlled opposition have failed, and that's why they're controlled. All of the social planners have failed.
You need to find God and do the right thing. All of you. And to all those women that want me to settle, there are good men who aren't me, who are more suitable for these women. Just the other day, I was talking to a female I actually did an interview with. I'm not going to tell you which one. And I said to her, if you lose 40 pounds, I believe it was, I will consider dating you and breaking my oath, which obviously I'm not going to break my oath, but I would consider it. I didn't lie about that. And I was trying to help her, you know. But anyway, she got mad and she said, well, you know, accept me for what I am. If you don't accept me for what I am, then forget it. Isn't that something? You want this guy who is such a great man. I mean, let's, let's take a step out of let me Let me look at this from an, another perspective. Let me pretend I am an angel in the sky. Here you are, a woman, you know, who, who believes in God. You know, you're, you're a decent person. But you want this wonderful guy who's in great shape, great mind, body, and soul. And instead of saying, ew, I'm disgusted, he's nice enough to say, you know what? I'm going to give you the opportunity to earn me. As cocky as it might seem, he's correct. I'm going to give you the opportunity to make yourself worthy of me, to make it so that I'm attracted to you. And I'm going to even forget how you used to look if you can achieve that. I'm not going to worry about that. But here she is saying, if you don't accept me as something you're not attracted to, as someone who didn't believe you about the persecution for the longest, who used to argue with you about it, who started off catfishing you, if you don't accept me for what I am, you can forget it. You know what happened next? Now listen very carefully. All of you overweight females that think she's right, listen very carefully and then slap yourselves. Listen carefully. What happened next was, I said, as you start to lose weight, guys will start talking to you and you're going to forget about me. You know what she said? She didn't say, no, that's not going to happen. I really want to be with you. You're this great guy. No. She said, you're probably right. Let me say it again. I don't think you're hearing me now. I said, as you lose weight, attractive guys are going to start hollering at you. Or, you know, guys are going to start talking at you. And you're probably going to forget all about me. Because now you're this bigger woman who's inherited this skinny body, so to speak, or this attractive body, and guys can be like, damn, you know, and they're going to start hollering at you. And that's what happens when, you know, these bigger women lose a whole lot of weight and all of a sudden they're attractive. They want to start getting what they're missing out on, what they were desiring and couldn't get before for the most part, right? And she said, you're probably right. So I want you all to ask yourselves, when this is how they typically think, how could I be wrong? Their body is pretty much like their mind. Think about it. They have an inferior philosophy, and had they been attractive, they would not be hollering at me. They would be hollering at a rich guy.